So I'll mention a couple of names and see whether they strike a chord. Jeremu Gilginga Odinga, George Saitoti, Kalonzo Musioka, William Ruto, and Rigathi Gashagwa. These are some of the individuals who have occupied the seemingly cast deputy president's office since Kenya gained its independence in 1963. The seat's current ousted occupant, Rigathi Gashagwa, is being bedeviled by the caste that has proven hard to break since he is the first to leave the position through an impeachment. His ouster is, however, contentious because a court order stayed the impeachment pending a hearing on its legality. But let's look at how deeply this thorn has dug into Kenya's second most powerful seat, starting with its first victim, Oginga Odinga. Now, Oginga, the father to the prominent opposition leader, Raila Odinga, was the first to resign from the position, which was then termed as the Office of the Vice President. Oginga resigned in 1966, just after one year and 123 days in office by penning a resignation letter to the then President Jomo Kenyatta. While arguing that he was not receiving a deserving treatment as a second in command, Oginga said, and I quote, I have a conscience and this does break me when I earn public money and with no job to do, end of quote. An art collector by the name James Murumbi was the next man in the position, but similar to Oginga's lament, he left after about six months in office. Murumbi was also vexed by Kenyatta's rule after the assassination of public critic Pio Gamapinto, who was one of his key political mentors. Now, amid the resounding cognizance that the position was a minefield, Daniel Arab Moy took over the hot seat until August 1978 when he was promoted to the presidency after Mze Kenyatta's death. To serve him as his deputy, Mwai Kibaki was appointed as the fourth vice president and served in the office for 10 years until 1988. Kibaki's tenure was equally bedeviled by political clamor because, for instance, in 1980, he expressed his disaffection at certain people in the government, accusing them of tarnishing his reputation in a bid to replace him. Now, according to reports, Kibaki was firing at the then Attorney General Charles Njonjo, who was rumored to have been eyeing the presidency. Succeeding him was a man christened the westernized man, owing to his foreign education, Josfat Karanja. After one year and 38 days, Karanja resigned to avoid an ongoing vote of no confidence in Kenyan parliament after accusations of wanting to overthrow President Moy's government by soliciting help from foreign nations. Now, George Saitoti, who became the longest serving vice president in Kenya, then occupied the seat until 2002, ending his 13 year stint. He was succeeded by Musalia Mudavadi, who had the shortest stint at the position of about 60 days until January 2003. With a change in the national leadership as President Moi was wrestled out of power, Michael Kijano Amalwa was elected to deputize President Moi Kibaki. Amalwa was, however, struck with a sudden illness reported to be kidney related and unfortunately succumbed on August 2003. Coming in, as the ninth vice president, Mudiawori was a man occupying the cursed position and seemingly circumvented its tentacles. Now, Mudi has lived long enough to witness the 10 years of his successors as he prepares to celebrate his 96th birthday this December. Kalonzo Musioka took over office in 2008 and served until 2013 when he handed over the position to a new government under President Uhuru Kenyatta. So, Wamalwa, Mudiawori and Kalonzo Musioka had fairly quiet tenures, making them the luckiest in the bunch. It's important to note that at this point, the position was being referred to as the deputy president after the promulgation of the 2010 constitution. Kalonzo's successor, William Ruto, was next in line. So now Ruto, despite serving for 10 years, he had a topsy-turvy relationship with Mr. Uhuru as he constantly complained of being ostracized and humiliated by leaders in government. And when he took office in 2022, he chose Rigathi Gashagwa to deputize him as the 12th occupant of the damned seat. Now, the curse, which has not yet found a leader apt enough to break it, has dug its talons into Gashagwa's back and it wants to tear him out of the seat. President Ruto has nominated Kithure Kindiki to replace him, but the court's verdict will have the final say.